a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Someone who had come down from Judea were instructing the brothers, unless you're circumcised according to the Mosaic practice, you cannot be saved. Because there arose no little dissension debate by Paul and Barnabas with them. It was decided that Paul, Barnabas, and some of the others should go to Jerusalem to the apostles and presbyters about this question. They were sent on a journey by the church and passed through Phoenicia and Samaria, telling of the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the brethren. When they arrived in Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church as well as the apostles and the presbyters. And they reported what God had done with them. But some of the party of the Pharisees who had become believers stood up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and direct them to observe the Mosaic law. The apostles and the presbyters met together to see about this matter. Herbum Domini. Alleluia. I rejoice because they said to me, We'll go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity to its tribes go up the tribes of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord and to set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Dominos Rubiscum Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Johannum. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit. And everyone that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me and I remain in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit. Because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather that and throw them into the fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. But by this, my Father is glorified, that you should bear much fruit and become my disciples. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, so the first reading builds up an anticipation in us for the first council of Jerusalem. And the first council in the history of the church. The first council in which a major problem in the church, a disagreement in the church gets resolved. And that disagreement is, do you have to partake in the Mosaic law in order to become Christian and be saved? In other words, do the Gentiles now, who are accepting Jesus Christ, have to be circumcised and indulge in the Jewish law in order to be saved? The Judaizers are saying yes, all right? But the church will eventually say no. You don't have to be circumcised. You don't have to become a Jew in order to be saved within Christianity. We're going to see what's most important is not the resolution, but how the resolution came about. That's very important because it speaks to the primacy of Peter, the primacy of the Pope, and the authority of the church. Now, in the gospel, again, in keeping with the fullness of truth that is our Catholic faith, when, when Jesus says that we need to be as branches attached to the vine and bearing fruit, remaining in Jesus, who is the vine, we are the branches, we need to remain in Jesus, attached to the vine, in a state of grace, 
in the state of grace. That's what this is all about. This is about being in a state of grace, being connected to Jesus on the vine, the Father in heaven, the vine growing. Remember I talked about Jesus and the Father are one. The Father is one with Jesus. Jesus is one with the Father. So the, so the, the Father is the vine grower. Jesus is the vine, and we are to stay attached to the vine. And persevere in attachment to the vine. Stay in a state of grace. Right? We remain in Jesus. Jesus remains in us. This is what Jesus is talking about. Stay in the state of grace. Now this whole idea of the vine and the branches has to do with the Eucharist. Because we cannot indulge in the Eucharist unless we're in a state of grace. All right, so, so the Eucharist is the means by which we stay as branches attached to the vine. The life-giving um, uh, 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 Eucharist, right? That's the vine grow with Jesus in the Eucharist, his body and blood. Gives us the branches life. We stay attached to the vine. This is how Jesus remains in us. Over and over and over again in the gospel, Jesus says, this is how you remain in me and I remain in you, right? And of course, Jesus in the Eucharistic discourse says, if you eat my body and drink my blood, I remain in you and you remain in me. And if you're on the vine, you remain in Jesus and Jesus remains in you. If we detach ourselves from the vine, in other words, we're not able to receive the Eucharist because we're in a state of mortal sin or we're heaping sin upon sin because we don't repent of our sin. We'll eventually wither and die, right? And so this is a, a metaphor, an analogy, a parable, so to speak, that Jesus uses in terms of us just staying in a state of grace so we can remain in Jesus and then we'll bear fruit. We're not in a state of grace we will not remain in Jesus. Jesus does not remain in us, and we do not bear fruit. All right, let's just talk for a moment about St. John of Avila. We know about Damon of Malachi, who was with the lepers in Hawaii and died serving the lepers. But St. John of Avila, it's also his feast day today, was born in Spain around 1500. John experienced a deep conversion in his teens, left his law studies, Spent three years in prayer before entering the seminary. He celebrated his ordination in 1526, so less than 10 years after the Reformation began, by serving dinner to 12 poor men in his home. Although he wanted to go to the missions, he answered the call of his bishop of Seville to preach and minister throughout southern Spain. John fervently promoted holiness for both lay people and priests. In 2012, Benedict uh, declared him a doctor of the church, the first diocesan priest to be named doctor of the church. All right, so St. John of Avila and St. Damien of Malachi intercede for us.